Okay, let's see if I figured it out. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Got it. Mm -hmm. All right, we're live, guys. All right, Philip, we ready? Yep, everything's good. All right, we'll give it another half a minute and then we'll get going, okay? All right, looks we're at about 30. All right, folks, uh, well, welcome. Thank you all very much for joining us today. Um, we're very excited uh, here at Nexa and Keystone and, and 3DDDS to uh, be providing uh, you guys the information um, and uh, just announcing, first of all, our partnerships and talking a little bit about uh, Nexa, our printer, uh, and then uh, the Keystone and 3DDS relationship. Uh, today we're going to be talking about, and my name is Jim Zarzor. I'm the head of dental solutions here at Nexa 3D. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about maximizing your time and dental revenues through efficient, precise, and fast 3D printing materials and hardware. All right, so the agenda for today um, is uh, we're going to start out with uh, Avi Raikanal, who is our founder and our CEO here at Nexa. Uh, and uh, Avi will give you a, an overview of Nexa and the, the reason why he founded it and uh, where we're at today. I'll talk a little bit about our NXD 200, our dental solution. Uh, and then our uh, Brent Zollinger, our head of operations, uh, will talk uh, in depth about the Nexa, any NXD 200 technology. Then we'll turn it over to the Keystone team, uh, and Ira and, and his team. Uh, Ira will give us an overview of uh, Keystone. And then Ben is gonna talk about uh, really the meat and the potatoes of everything we're uh, talking about today, about the validations uh, with uh, their, their amazing materials. And then we'll turn it over to Colin Bernard about, uh, 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 about 3D DDS and our partnership there and what they offer and uh, how we're going to fit this all together uh, into a, a simplistic workflow uh, for everyone. All right, Avi, with that, I will turn it over to you and uh, we'll get going. Yeah, if you can just uh, advance the slide. Thank you, Jim. Welcome everybody to our joint webinar. It's a real pleasure to to be here, I'm Avi Reichenthal. I uh, co-founded Nexa about five years ago uh, after spending more than 12 years in the 3D printing industry as the CEO of 3D Systems. Uh, and I did it because I felt that with all the great things that are happening in 3D printing, it just did not live up to its potential in terms of speed and productivity. And in thinking about what it could look like, it wasn't acceptable to me to uh, come out with a Me Too printer. And so we immediately kind of said, the world does not need another SLA or another DLP printing. There are plenty of those choices. What the world really needs, and especially uh, for dental, is high throughput digital automation. And so we started with that five years ago, uh, and we did it. We developed a very differentiated light engine, which you will hear about, we were able to increase productivity by as much as 20x. Uh, we are now 65 strong on the team 
Uh, we have uh, an incredible facility. We also amassed some 40 patents over the last few years. So we're developing a significant technology stack. We shipped over 160 printers all over the world. And we're extremely well capitalized in the company. Uh, we've raised over $86 million of capital uh, and are supported by the largest company in the world, by uh, Saudi uh, Aramco. Uh, we've also strong Midwest support uh, from Magnetar. Jim, please. Yep. Uh, in the process, we did a lot more than just build an amazing technology stack and uh, develop a lot of patents. We also attracted a lot of experienced industry veterans, uh, starting with Jim uh, himself, who has a decade plus with uh, Align Technologies, uh, my uh, partner in uh, COO, Kevin McAuley, who has three decades in this space uh, and continuing with uh, our incredible CTO and VP of engineering, who also has uh, a lot of experience in dental from Invisalign. And we also attracted a tremendous board of directors uh, to, to the company. Uh, which is going to see us through not just today, but well into the future. And as you guys know, because you're all in, 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 in the business of making it happen, you know that nothing happens until somebody buys something. And uh, what is really excited, uh, exciting, I should say, for me as, as, as a co-founder, an inventor in this business is that all the hard work which started five years ago is translating into happy and satisfied customers uh, all over the world in many different industries. Uh, and the number one reason that we are able to grow and double up period over period uh, is because we have increasingly more customers that are validating our value proposition, which is 20X productivity at the lowest total cost of ownership. And with that, Jim, I'm gonna turn it back to you. Great, thank you, Avi, appreciate it. And appreciate your insight. Um, we're building a, an amazing organization here. So thank you for your leadership. Um, so guys, you know, look, digital technologies, 3D printing, the dental industry in general, is changing every day, um, you know, keeping up and in, in really having the forethought and insight to really, you know, stay three, four, five steps ahead is, is really critical. And I, and I think that's, you know, that's what we're looking at. Um, you know, when we look at printers, there's a lot of printers out there. There's a variety of different printers. And, and, and I think it's, it's really, you know, it's really critical that, that all the boxes are checked, if you will. And it, you know, it really comes down to workflow. You know, workflow has to be simplistic and easy. Um, you know, at the at the end of the day, right? From the scanner, software, materials to printers. But you know, when we look at it, you know, it's it's what kind of accuracy? You know, ninety to one hundred. You know, ninety eight percent accuracy is critical when you're looking at one hundred micron dental models. Uh, speed. Um, you know, having models and having that throughput done in in a in a, in a quick period of time is, is absolutely critical. So, you know, when you're looking at higher accuracy, increased speed, increased productivity, you know, simple workflows, I talked about that. We also just uh, had a, have a partnership now with Octon to, to help with the manufacturing of, uh, of workflows. So, you know, we're constantly integrating and developing and, and growing here. Uh, the impact with, you know, dental specific re resins, and that's why we have we've chosen Keystone to be um, our lead partner when it comes to the resin, uh, the, the resin piece of the business. All that being said, those you know those four or five bullet points up there really lead to lower cost of ownership, rapid OI, uh, ROI, and then really the turnaround. So that's that's really the the pieces of the puzzle that we looked at, Avi and the team looked at when they were building this organization and building a printer. 
Uh, so let me introduce to you guys the, the NXD 200. Uh, this is the uh, this is Nexus Dental Solution. Uh, as as Avi mentioned, you know we have several large installations, 160 units out there. Um, several of those are in the dental space, uh, but the, the machine, the guts of the NXD 200 is similar to our industrial grade machine, the NXD 400. Uh, so the bottom line there is that it's 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 been a tested machine. It's been out there. Uh, it's 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 working on on high productive pr production lines, and so it's working effectively. And so the the ins and outs of the NXD 200 are there. Uh, the biggest difference that you'll see when you're looking at the NXD 200 is this disease stage. The the height of the Z stage, obviously for dental, you don't need the larger Z stage. So we've optimized the the volume uh, for dental, uh, and it still gives you the edge to edge uniformity and accuracy. So that full build plate. Uh, can be maximized, uh, and you'll see the numbers that we'll be able to produce, uh, whether it's models, splints, et cetera, as we, we, we move further into the webinar. Uh, we do have our curing units. Brent will talk a little bit about our curing units and our wash units. Um, but when you look at that printable area, you know, 275 by 155 by 200, um, significant for a mid-level machine. Uh, 4K resolution and a 405 uh, nanometer. So, uh, you can see the the machine is is a high, is a highly productive, large in in its capacity, and I think when you look at throughput opportunity, I think we're building and we have really a world class uh, 3D printer here, and uh, will help many of the dental labs and the manufacturers uh, out there. So, uh, as I mentioned, um, again, just fast speed, highest throughput, and then uh, the materials there and validated workflows that we'll discuss here in a minute. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about the technology. What makes uh, this Nexa and the NXD 200, uh, you know, different, if you will? And and uh, I'll turn that over now to Brent to give you uh, more insight, really about our technology and um, you know what what makes us different. Brent. Yeah. Thanks for the introduction, Jim. The NXD 200 technology we call LSPC. And the magic behind that is uh, a few things happening. Our light engine is LCD based uh, masking, which allows us to have very uniform uh, quality across the entire surface. Uh, so we don't have edge effects. Um, every location on the build plate has the same resolution and quality levels. We have a large uh, LED array that's providing uniform and collimated light output through that light guide, uh, which is managed uh, in, a, in a way to ensure that it's reliable and consistent uh, throughout the history of and the life of the printer. Um, Typically all that's required from a maintenance perspective on this light engine is ensuring cleanliness on the top surface and, and changing filters uh, and doing assessments every thousand hours. Uh, this light engine is designed to last well over 10,000 hours uh, without issues. The light engine has uh, high power settings, which allow the printer to be very productive. The NXD 200 is designed from the ground and through the whole ecosystem as a high productivity machine suitable for uh, production environments. Um, it allows also an architecture that can be upgraded and improved over time as like resolution of LCDs improve. The other key technology for the printer is our membrane technology, where we're using our proprietary hybrid substrate, which is capable of well over 50,000 layers uh, per membrane. The membrane is separate from the vat to ensure minimal cost uh, when we do a change out and minimal waste. The machine's tailored to be automatable and work in production environments 
essentially 24 seven multiple shift operation. Uh, it includes fleet management and integration with a validated workflow that we've done together with our uh, material providers. The architecture of the machine allows easy exchange of any component which may fail um, in modules so that downtimes are minimized and in our ecosystem, if there's any support or requirements needed, we have a comprehensive support knowledge base as well as it's easy to get a hold of an actual person uh, to help walk you through any issues you may be running into. Next slide. So the printer is all about productivity. Um, on one membrane, we could print say, uh, if you're printing aligners, you might 50,000 layers equates to roughly 250 to 300 print jobs before you have to make a membrane exchange uh, for flat aligners or vertical aligners um, where you have higher packing density and more prints per build. Uh, you'll get somewhere between 50 and 60 print jobs before you're prompted to change. The printer is giving you good accuracy across the print platform. We're holding tolerances of 50 to 100 micron or normal. Material can be loaded through the peristolic pump and unloaded through the pump or poured in directly, uh, depending on the preference of the operation. We have a large area where you can do multiple models and we have a software suite that allows you to, to integrate and pack uh, dense builds. Uh, so you can minimize the, the, that's actually one of the challenges that you start to run into with a pr printer with this productivity level is that the number of build file preparations you need to do is, is it's hard to keep up. So that has all been completely automated. Um, and you're essentially just managing any exceptions or model quality issues as needed. Next slide. And then what we know users want are just parts at the end of the game. That requires both washing and curing. We offer wash station called X wash, which is automated, will control exactly the time that the material is exposed to the washing agent so you don't have any defects or forget parts in the wash um, and have very consistent process. This wash tank's compatible with our X-Clean uh, safe and economically or an ecologically friendly solvent uh, and washing agent. Um, we also have the X-Cure, which can hold up to three build plates um, at a time. Uh, particularly when you're running dental jobs, the cure times are in the range of 10 to 30 minutes, typically for most of the materials. Um, and one X cure and X wash uh, can easily keep up with typically two or three printers. Um, And here at Nexus 3D, we operate all this equipment in our own, what we call flexible factory. We have a number of printers and post curing units where we're able to simulate and help people with bridge production as they're ramping up and launching their operations internally. Okay. All right, that's it. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Brent. I appreciate that. And, and you know, as we, you know, Move move forward, then you know. Obviously, we can get into more depth, guys and uh, folks on the on the call. That yeah, you know, if you have questions, uh, we'll be happy to answer those and and uh, move forward there. So, um, so when it comes down to you know picking the right partners and uh, you know looking at who makes the most sense uh, when we're you know as at Nexa when we we need resin, we need uh, digital solutions. Um, you know these these two really came to the forefront in, in my mind. And, and we've worked very closely together to, to make sure that we've done this right, uh, that we've provided and, and, and optimized everything that, that we're gonna push out to our customers. Uh, and, and I can't tell you that, you know, the time that we've spent together to, to make sure that we have the right uh, uh, 
uh, you know, machine as well as materials and solution and digital solutions for you guys um, is, is really critical. So with that, um, I'll introduce you to Ira Rosenau, who is uh, with Keystone and uh, allow uh, Ira to walk you through uh, Keystone and, uh, and then we'll get into the validation with Ben Taylor. Ira? Thank you, Jim. Much appreciated. Uh, first of all, before I start, I want to thank um, the whole team at Nexa from Avi and Kevin and Jim and Brent and Brandon and your whole team. It's been, uh, um, it's been a lot of work. Um, I remember the first time I came to visit Avi about four years ago. Uh, so when Avi says he found it about five years ago, we've been working together for about 80% of the time trying to um, optimize the technologies with uh, Keystone's dental resins. And it's uh, been a good it's been a good partnership and it's been one that um, has taken its time to, to make sure we're getting it right. Um, uh, the other piece of this is just a little bit like walk down memory lane. Colin is one of the very first people we really engaged with to help us with some of the technical and testing of our key print resins when we first started this. So um, it's been a long time coming to get to this point where we're pushing out together. And uh, I think it's a quite a good combination, good team. Uh, the ecosystem is working tremendously well. Um, you will hear from myself. I'm going to give you a little bit of background about Keystone. Uh, with me today is Ben Taylor. He's our engineer who runs all of our 3D printing lab. Uh, he brings a lot of knowledge and uh, comparative information across uh, other printing options compared to Nexa. And Doug Statham is also with us today. Doug is our head of digital sales. So um, I'll jump in now. Uh, I'm Ira. I'm the president of um, Keystone's Dental Group. Uh, hopefully uh, some of you've seen or heard from me before, but if not, I'm going to give you a little bit of background about Keystone. Um, Keystone is in um, a specialty chemical manufacturer. We're operating primarily in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, where we have four manufacturing sites, uh, FDA um, approved uh, for OTC drugs, as well as uh, ISO 1345 for medical device manufacturing. Uh, Keystone's been, uh, the dental company's been around for about 100 years. The current owners uh, purchased the business units in the mid-70s and has been in the family for coming up on close to 50 years. Um, our two primary verticals are cosmetic nail coatings and dental. And while they don't may seem incongruous at first, uh, the reality is the deep polymer and photopolymer technology runs uh, throughout this business through both of our business units. Uh, UV curable technologies is some of our coarse competency that we have at this company. And um, those technologies have given birth to virtually the entire cosmetic side of our business and uh, has also given birth ultimately to the key print line of resins. Those technologies allowed us to enter the space, to do it compliantly, to do it smartly, and to help scale this up uh, for the dental industry. So uh, with that, we've been in photopolymers for about 30 years, uh, we make millions of pounds a year across all of our uh, verticals. Uh, in the dental space, we have between four and 5,000 dental SKUs uh, across lab, operatory, digital, and preventative. Uh, we keep materials in stock both in the States and in our facility in Germany, in Sing in Germany. So we always have low lead times and materials in stock so we can best serve our partners, uh, both digital and traditional in the dental space. All right, next slide, please, thanks. Um, just a little snapshot. I think we all know this. Everybody who's on this call knows how well and how quickly the 3D um, market has adopted in dental. Uh, obviously, I think uh, we all know that um, mass customization is when 3D printing really wins. And in dental, everybody's mouth and their oral environments are different. So 3D printing is perfect. It helps treat uh, the, the increasing um, incidences of dental disease, tooth fractures, um, indentialism, um, whatever the, the needs are, 3D printing is keeping pace with what the dental needs are. Uh, cosmetic dentistry continues to advance and uh, year over year, um, we just see massive growth. I think at this point, it's well over um, 50 to 60% of dental labs have a 3D printer and approximately 25% of clinical offices. So dental is, um, this is no longer the new guy on the block in the dental industry. It's being pretty well adopted now at this point. All right, next slide, please. Thanks. Um, here, we're going to quickly just highlight the which of our resins, um, and I'm going to do a, just a slightly deeper dive into each one of these in a little bit, but just an overview. Uh, we have five biocompatible medical device resins that are validated in, in the Nexa printing system and the workflow. Um, our two um, key splint materials, which I think everybody's familiar with at this point, really has changed the entire um, landscape 
for making night guards, whether it's digital or traditional, this product has really changed the game for most practitioners and dental labs. Uh, we have our indirect bonding tray, uh, key ortho IBT for placement of uh, brackets efficiently. Uh, our surgical guide material is outstanding, um, hard resin for surgical guide, very stable, um, transparent, so it's easy to place your, your implants and to, and to perform the, the drilling surgery. And then our custom impression tray, key tray, uh, is also an outstanding um, class one material, very strong, withstand all the forces of, of the impression taking process. And then our primary uh, lab resin that we're working with Nexa on is our key model ultra, which is a fantastic uh, high speed, high performance um, material, uh, whether it's restoration planning or thermal forming. It's got a built-in thermo forming release agent to help with the aligner workflow. Um, each of these resins is working really, really well in the Nexus system. So um, we'll get into just a little bit more about each of these in a couple minutes. All right, let's talk about um, Key Splint Soft. Uh, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about Key Splint Hard. Uh, probably most people who are watching have had either played with it or have uh, heard about it. Um, so uh, really this is a very unique printing resin in the dental industry. Um, not only is it patent protected, um, really the, the game-changing technology is um, the chemistry allows this part to um, be very durable and very tough, but the modulus inside the body changes. It grabs the undercuts. Um, it fits better. It helps with patient compliance. And the real thing it does with these chemistries is it solves the biggest problem with splints over many, many years, which is brittleness and, and breaking over time. These materials have now been on the market for over two years. I think we probably have close to 2 million parts probably out in the field. We have very, very, very low incidences of reported breaks or fractures. Uh, it's a very, very unique and game-changing product. It's abrasion resistant, easy to polish, easy to care for, easy to clean. Uh, you've got three years of shelf life, which is super helpful in, in managing the supply chain, particularly in current supply chain situations. So we will have three years of guaranteed shelf life with our material. Um, if you want to use oxygen um, to cure, you can. If you want to do it in an inert environment with a nitrogen hookup, also works just fine. Great results, biocompatible under any workflow with or without nitrogen. And we, as Ben's going to show to you, we test the heck out of this material to make sure it's safe and effective regardless of the workflow. Um, one of the things we did um, before we had 2 million parts in the field, <laughs> exactly how it was going to perform, was to do some initial testing in a, in a controlled academic environment. Um, and we ran um, life cycle testing on um, both key splint hard, key splint soft, and several existing state-of-the-art um, splint materials, whether thermal formed or traditional acrylics. And ultimately, um, key splint soft and key splint hard both showed really, really good levels of abrasion resistance. Um, at least as good, if not significantly better than traditional materials. And now a couple of years later, we've seen this testing has borne out by having very few, few failures in the field with our devices. Next slide, please. All right, this is kind of the money shot, so to speak, because um, it's about the money. Um, key Splint Soft and Key Splint Hard both really deliver a lot of value to the labs. This is one scenario that we've put together. It's just math. You can do your own math, okay? We didn't do anything special, it's just math, all right? Um, the biggest variables here is if you're selling, uh, as a lab, you're selling your splint to the doctor for $125 or $150, then you, you can you know, add a factor of more profitability to that bottom line. If you're paying your lab staff $27 an hour, okay, maybe then you're gonna have a little bit less profitability. You can play with your own assumptions. The biggest point here is that um, when you're looking for volume production, real throughput, okay, and that's really what we're going to talk about. It's really what the Nexa delivers is outstanding throughput, um, in addition to the quality and the speed, but you have really, really high volume production. Um, you can see the math here. If you're doing, if you have the business and you're doing 10 to 40 splints a day, um, even after you pay the printer, really the printer in three, four, five bottles of key splints off, you will have paid for your Nexa printer in profitability. Um, and if you have the business, it can throw off, you know, somewhere north of, of three quarters of a million dollars a year, if not more, because as we're going to show you, and Ben's going to talk to you about in a couple of minutes, the Nexa build plate, we can nest 32 splints on that build plate at this time. 
So that 40 a day is really just one production run with the Nexa. Um, if you have the business and you want to scale it, and I can see a few folks who are in this in this presentation, and I know the business they have, um, this is a production unit that scales. Um, and uh, uh, this profitability picture gets better um, the more you can develop the business. Uh, key splint hard, uh, same profitability picture, I might add, um, just a few different things. Uh, when we came out with key splint hard, I think the first question we got and the primary question we got was why? <laughs> key splint soft's great. We love key splint soft. It does so many things. The reality is key splint soft does, you know, 85, 90% of what you need a splint resin to do and to do it quite well. However, a really rigid, truly, um, truly rigid, unlike Key Splint Soft, truly rigid splint material is needed for certain applications, whether it's something like an NTI device, whether it's for a really severe bruxer, whether it's just clinician preferences. Some docs just like it to be a little bit of a harder material. We now have a suite of splint materials, both FDA cleared, both uh, Health Canada and CE marked as class 2A in Europe. Um, a suite of products that really solves whatever needs um, a, a splint or night guard uh, practitioner is going to need. Uh, just a little bit about the clearance, which I just referenced. Um, you have pretty much global uh, clearance at this point. Uh, we are working on a couple of territories in Asia as well. Uh, but if you're in Canada, the US, Australia, New Zealand, the EU, you've got a compliant and proven now set of products that work in this workflow. Uh, mouth guards, night guards, splints. Uh, the one point I will make is um, key splint hard is also indicated for retainer usage. So that's an, another additional indication that you have with key splint hard that you don't have with key splint soft. All right, I'm gonna very quickly go through the other applications. Um, key ortho IBT. Uh, this is a really unique um, bracket um, placing resin, um, very precise. It's odorless, it's tasteless, which is, which is a big deal for particularly for teenagers who are getting, getting brackets placed in their mouth. Uh, the adhesive uh, does not stick to the tray. It will, will stick to the teeth, but it will not um, stay bonded into the tray. It's translucent, so you can cure through the tray. Um, really an outstanding uh, device, a little niche for ortho guys, but for the orthodontics space, it, it's quite a good resin. Um, key guide is is really one of our you know first and and still today you know very best products and and quite uh, quite a good selling product. It's class one biocompatible. It's autoclavable, very color stable, translucent, and as you can see from the data chart below, um, really has some outstanding physical properties compared to some of the competitors. Um, also, uh, uh, multiple different workflows and multiple different, um, settings have worn this out. The product works really well. Um, I've had absolutely no reported failures, uh, fractures during surgeries, anything like that. We've had really, I can't think of a single complaint we've had on key guide in, in over probably close to three years now. All right. Next slide, please. Uh, key tray is for custom impression trays, uh, primarily in the denture workflow. Uh, this is a really good material. It's very strong um, so that when you're trying to remove your impression, you don't have a risk of uh, breaking off the handle or having a, uh, a misimpression. Uh, it's very strong. You can get it out of the, uh, the mouth without losing any accuracy on the impression. Um, uh, really uh, doesn't bind to compound waxes. Uh, everything really can um, come out of the tray well, and it does take the tray adhesion well. So adhesive materials that help keep the impression tray in, uh, material in place during the impression process are very stable within that tray. Key Model Ultra is uh, the product that we released at the beginning of this year. Um, it has been designed specifically um, to solve a few of the um, issues that we saw with model materials after our first generation of model materials. Uh, this is designed for ultra fast printing and for thermal forming. Uh, it has a release agent in it, so the thermal sheets will not stick. Uh, very, very good detail. Uh, we have two colors. Uh, color is somewhat of a preference, but these um, basically mimic um, stone colors that have been on the dental market for years. Uh, very easy to see the margins and the details uh, in the tooth anatomy. Um, so even if you're using it for restoration planning, 
very accurate, particularly at like 50 microns, uh, you shouldn't have much, much problem with it. And I know Colin will probably be telling you a little bit about his experience with all of these uh, materials as he's been working with them through the validation and the service and support process. Um, it's just a little reminder of all the work we do to make things better for the end users. Um, there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Um, you'll hear from Ben in a couple minutes. He does an ungodly amount of our validation work. And um, because we are an open source printer um, uh, partner and our resins are open source and we work with um, a wide array of printer partners, um, through that, we've developed quite an expertise in testing and validating workflows, not just printers, but printers and cure boxes to make sure that they get to the right state of physical properties so that they satisfy the need of the application and that they get to the, to the right state of biocompatibility so that they're safe and effective for the patient. At this point, we have 10 unique resins. By this time next year, I expect that to be 14, as you'll be seeing our denture base and our um, very interesting tooth solutions coming out um, next year. Um, we will have a denture try-in resin ready to go by probably January, really interesting, three shades of try-in resin for the denture process. But today it's 10 unique resins, with 40 different printer validations, 18 different cure boxes. We've done really over 2000 different combinations and you know, probably now closer to 300 biocompatibility tests and, and dozens upon dozens in the key splint family. And with that, we hope that that gives the users confidence that we know what the heck we're doing when we say this workflow is outstanding because we do a lot of testing to ensure both the repeatability, the accuracy, the performance of the part according to specification and the biocompatibility profile. It all matters. And so our experience, when we sit down and we say to you, this Nexa workflow is really um, quite good and quite safe and quite effective. It's because we bring all of this experience to the table when we, when we render that, that set of opinions. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ben. Ben does all of our 3D printing engineer work in our lab. He manages our validation program. He's an engineer. Um, he's become really valuable Keystone employee over the last couple of years. And Ben's the guy who spent the most time playing with the Nexa printer here at Keystone and helping to validate and understand how to maximize the workflow. He's gonna show you some really interesting pictures of the build plates and some nesting strategies. And he's gonna talk you through our experience and what we see as throughput, not just with the printer, by the way, but with that cure box. Because Ben's gonna show you some data at the end of this thing about the cure box, and it'll show you the entire workflow, the ecosystem, the throughput is quite high. So with that, I'll turn it over to Ben Taylor. Thank you very much, Ira. So, you know, as Ira just mentioned it, you know, we've, we have over 30, 40 different types of printers, 10 different resins, uh, thousands of data points. So we've been able to do a lot of testing. We've created this rigorous validation protocol. Um, and what I want to talk to you guys today about is just how we've been able to identify probably one of the best high throughput printers uh, out in the dental market. So you know, through our validation protocol, we're looking for optimal accuracy, mechanical properties, biocompatibility, printer speed, and then workload testing, especially with a big build plate with that the Nexa, the NXD200 provides. Um, the high throughput is one of the biggest inputs that the, the customer, you guys, are going to need in order to have, um, to be able to rely on this type of printer. So the overall review of of this Nexta, Nexa NXD 200 is, you know, outstanding printer speed when it comes per part. Uh, in the next few slides, you'll, you know, you're going to be able to see just how fast we're able to print all of our key print resins. And, you know, if you were, if you're working with our key print resins now and other printers, you'll be able to do a nice comparison and really truly see the, the amount of parts that you're able to, uh, to print in a given day. Um, with that said, the high throughput, uh, it, it's amazing with the, you know, the technical side of this NXD 200 and, and how it was built uh, for, you know, high bill plate durability and, and quick print times. Um, when, it, when it comes to us on a technical end, and like I said, our last portion of this validation is to really test the full workload of that printer, test the full bill plate and repeating that bill plate. And 
you know, I'm going to mention it right now. The, the optimized support strategies is probably one of the, you know, the best things I've I've seen um, with Nexa and me on the technical end. When I when I talk to a ton of customers, you know, 85% of the issues that customers come across with print failures is really the support strategies that they're applying to their prints and. Um, the, the confidence that I have when working with all of our resins and across all of our printers, the confidence that I have with the Nexus support strategy uh, is very high. And you'll see with the next couple photos of, uh, of with the, the bill plates of, you know, we've been, we've been able to see, you know, constant repeatability with a lot of our prints uh, with little to no failures. Um, and then as Brent mentioned earlier in the, in the slide deck, you know, key print, we're going to be, being able to offer our, you know, our resins in 5 kg bulk. So being able to constantly add resin into your, into your printer through a pump is just going to now increase that throughput and just allow little labor time and more printing time. And that's really what we need here. Uh, and it's great to see. And, you know, with very fast prints per parts and um, being able to have a high throughput, I think that's, that's a true reflection of the low peel force. And on a technical end, I do want to make that a point of, you know, we do have some exceptional surface quality and, uh, and really, really low peel force, which allows just better quality overall with prints, faster prints, um, and just, just higher expectations when it comes to the digital workflow. So we can move on to the next slide. So as you can see, this is the last part of our validation. Every time we're testing any printer, with any resin, the last part is to test the full bill plate, constantly test it, and let's really, really test that, that those settings uh, to ensure that the end user, you guys are gonna have um, a reliable and consistent print. And as you can see here with Keyspun Soft, Hard, and Key Guide, uh, we were able to test, you know, 32 splints uh, in a little, in little time. I'll, I'll have the print speeds next. Um, you can go to the next slide. And then when our additional three resins, Key Ortho IBT, Key Tray, and Key Model Ultra, as you could see, out of the six resins here, you know, four of the resins are on supports and the just the support strategy that was used and how automated this system is um, just brings confidence on my end where I'm able to start a print, walk away and, you know, not have to worry about checking on this print mid, you know, midway. Uh, we can go to the next slide. So this is a really important slide here. So, you know, we could take a quick minute just to kind of gaze this over, you know, print time, as we all know, in 3D printing has to do with the height of the print. Now, when we have an increased uh, build volume, we're able to now manipulate the orientation of these prints based off the needs that we need as a user. If we're trying to get quick prints or we're trying to have high throughput. And as you can see here with all of these resins, we've tested uh, the high throughput end where we're trying to put as many parts on this build as possible and uh, see how low time we can print. So as you can see here, you know, we're printing about 32 splints, both for Keyspun Soft and Keyspun Hard at a recommended 45 to 60 degree angle, uh, you know, we're looking at under an hour and 20 minutes for Keyspun Hard and just over two hours for Keyspun Soft. And, and again, you know, you, I'm sure most of you have tested the, and have used the Keysplint family resin. Uh, you, you can take this and honestly compare with most of the printers. This is outstanding print speeds, um, especially when we're looking at uh, the print quantity, the full bill plates of splints. And then as you can see here with the eight hour output, you know, what I did was I took those six photos, as you can see, I just took the data from those and we're able to say, you know, with no very little labor time, repeating those prints, uh, how many, how many parts can we put out in an eight hour day? And as you can see here, that number can fluctuate depending on this, you know, the height of the print, um, but the overall picture here just shows just with our key print resins and the NXT 200, um, high throughput is, is, you know, one of the biggest, you know, great things here that we're, we can kind of take a look at. Um, print speed and accuracy, you know, these are three great things that this NXT 200 provides. You can go to the next slide. 
So, you know, we've, we looked at full bill plates, you know, so the, the next question is, well, well, is it accurate? You know, and that's one of the most important things we also check on our end. That's kind of what we probably spend most of our time doing is, is confirming the accuracy of our prints. And as you can see here, comparing both Key Model Ultra and Key Guide, which in my eyes on the technical end, that's probably the two most important resins or accuracy comes into play. Um, we're comparing the, the 3D scan accuracy, uh, both at 150 microns and 100 microns, uh, both from the NXD 200 and, and then some third-party benchmarks. And as you can see here with the print speeds and the high throughput, you know, the NXD 200 with key print meets, if not exceeds, the, the printer 3D scan accuracy that's expected in the, in the dental uh, industry. And then moving on to the next slide, uh, you know, the overall conclusion with uh, the NXD 200 and our key print resins is on my end, when I'm printing and I'm testing all of these resins with across all of these printers, you know, it's everyone wants, you know, highest accuracy, but they also want very fast prints. They also want a lot of throughput. And, and it's very important to find that happy mix and be able to find that easy trade-off between all four of these um, points here. And what across all of the printers we have in, in our compatible workflows, the NXT 200, you know, is definitely the most confident when it comes across to all four of these, you know, one of the best print speeds we have on uh, across all 3D printers and then, you know, meets if not exceeds printer accuracy. As we could tell, it is a huge high throughput. As Avi mentioned, you know, the goal of Nexa and NXD 200 is to have a high throughput digital automation. And as you can see here, we've achieved that. And, you know, it's on my end being able to test these resins, it's been, um, it's exciting. It, this is very exciting too. And then this last slide, is, um, you know, our focus for, for Keystone is to provide optimal print workflows. Um, so that goes from the material, even all the way to the curing unit. So as you can see here with the NXD 200 and our key print resins, we've done testing with both the X-Cure and the Auto Flash, uh, both two, two great units into the, in the dental industry. However, as you can see here with this X-Cure, um, when we're talking about high throughput in a dental lab, you know, the curing can be one of the snag points. Um, 85, 90% of the curing units out in the dental industry are very small, you know, and it, they don't meet the, the expectations of what a dental lab may need. And the X-Cure, as you can see in this photo, um, produced over 100 parts per hour, and it, it meets what the printer can produce, and it also meets, if not exceeds, what that dental lab um, is trying to, to shoot for at the end of the day. So this, that's it for the technical end. It's, uh, it's a very exciting workflow. I'm very excited to be able to share that with you all. Thank you, Ben. No, that was, that's good stuff. Um, I think that's what we all, you know, we all wanna see and we wanna see the data and we wanna see exactly what, what you're seeing uh, in lab. So. Uh, good stuff, Ira and, and Ben. Thank you guys for for your support and uh, you know I, and just working through it with us and, and getting the machine uh, where it needs to be. Uh, so obviously, producing parts is critical. Um, we know that consistency. Things do happen at times, um, and and we want to make sure that you know we're providing you guys both internal as well as external support. Uh, really 24 seven. And, uh, you know, we want to make sure that uh, our customers are taken care of. So uh, with that, we've now partnered with, with 3D DDS and Colin and his team uh, to, uh, to really, to be that backbone for us, uh, to, to make sure that uh, our customers are taken care of. Uh, so I'll turn it over to Colin, let, let him talk a little bit about uh, who they are and what they provide. And then, and then we'll get into a Q and A session. Okay. Colin, all you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Ira and Ben, and appreciate everybody uh, everybody's time. And those slides were terrific, Ben. Thank you very much. Um, just kind of a little bit about me for those of you who don't know me. Um, I've been in the dental industry for pretty much as long as I can remember. My father was a prosthodontist, and I kind of grew up in the laboratory as a kid. Uh, I opened the, up a laboratory in 1997, so I've been around for, for quite some time now, unfortunately or fortunately. 
Um, but we saw right away the, 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 the path towards digital and being able to kind of streamline workflows, being able to produce cleaner, neater, um, better parts, uh, faster, obviously, and just more consistently with a digital workflow. And obviously, since, since 1997 or so, um, we've come a long way. Obviously, starting out in the early days with Nobel and, and you sent everything to them to now pretty much laboratories and even dentists are, are manufacturing things on site in-house. Um, for me, I've been 3D printing since 2004. Our first printer was an Envision Tech. And uh, back in those days, all we used it for was to print wax patterns. And at that time, they told us it was only for casting crown and bridge work. But of course, you know, I was a partial denture guy. So we just immediately pivoted, pivoted to figuring that out. And, and that kind of sparked uh, uh, different relationships that we've had over the years with various different companies and kind of sparked uh, the consulting and R&D and validation side of my business. Um, and that goes all the way back to, I'd say, about 2005 or 2006 when we started kind of consulting outside the, the dental lab industry, uh, or sorry, sorry, outside the dental laboratory itself, and sort of doing other things that a traditional laboratory just, just didn't do. And I would say, you know, between 2006 and 2016, I spent less and less time in day-to-day -day operations of the laboratory and uh, much more time involved with uh, R&D and with development of the additive manufacturing process for Dell. Um, in 2016, I sold off the laboratory side of, of, of my business and I moved from New Jersey to Atlanta and that sort of sparked 3D DDS. It's a pretty easy pivot because we were doing a lot of the things that we do at 3D DDS already. Um, we were just devoting 100% of our time to this versus, um, you know, production laboratory work. We now at this point focus on four main areas, you know, equipment, software, and consumable sales. That one's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, technical support services and, and training, uh, consulting R&D and workflow validations and, and doing things behind the scenes with, with various different companies. And then of course, can't seem to get away with it uh, when you're in this industry. And that is, we still run production here. Um, I'm not a traditional lab. We do everything here with additive manufacturing and uh, you know we don't stack porcelain. We're not doing any of those things. We're here more as a resource and a support center for the laboratory side to be able to get you know their raw materials to put their finishing touches on it. Um, next slide, slide please, Jim. So I'm not going to get too much into this, and Ira touched on this a little bit earlier. You know, we've been working with Keystone and others for quite some time now, and 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 I'm not going to get into the details of the validation stuff. Ben and, and Ira have done a great job with that, but uh, the important part to take away is is we're involved in this process, and it sort of gives us a clear insight into the hardware side, the software side, and the materials. Um, you know, Ira and his team are are. are complete experts on the on the material side and, and vice versa Jim and, and Brent and the guys at Nexa are 3D printing experts and what we have been able to work together to do is sort of develop and hone all of these different applications and then help to create this ecosystem so it goes beyond just 3D printing but covers the whole workflow and we can help you throughout each individual step and, and we're always there you know for your support between our team between the Nexa team and, and even with the Keystone team as well. So this is kind of a group effort. And again, we're just trying to tie this all together. Jim, next slide, please. So we did talk about production and uh, we do do some unique things here, um, but we are able to print and, and, and handle any overflow that any of our customers may have. Uh, the benefit of running printers is we've had our Nexus since, since April and uh, we've been working with Brent and his team you know, quite extensively on Kind of honing that user interface, hosing, uh, honing that workflow in to get everything dialed in the right way so that by the time it finally gets to the end user customer, the dental laboratory, you know, we've experienced all of the things that you guys experience or, or could experience, and we've made that as streamlined as possible. Obviously, like Brent and uh, Ben have both said, you know, this is an ongoing process, right? If we find new things or you know, in the case of Octin, adding new uh, software with new uh, features and, and, and capabilities, you know, we're constantly trying to update this process to make this as streamlined and, and user-friendly and repeatable as possible. 
Jim, next slide. So, so our experience, you know, on the technical side with, with helping with R&D and 510K validation work, as well as running the production facility here, kind of lend itself to us being able to help you as the laboratory customer be able to integrate this technology into your laboratory. Um, we know from years of experience that, you know, not everybody runs the same software, same equipment, same workflows, same techniques in order to create what ends up turning out to be the same part, right? So if you're printing a, or producing a splint, not everybody produces that splint or has the same idea of what the correct design parameters and, and end results should be. But having said that, we worked across all kinds of different platforms, all the different major software, three shape, ExoCAD, Serona, uh, a number of different pieces on the surgical planning side and as well on the ortho uh, planning side. So we're well-versed in software and how all of these things work. And what we're able to do is sort of integrate this all together, you know, with the help of Nexa and, and Keystone and, and then have these specific workflows be able to be easily integrated into the laboratory. So not going to get too in depth on this. We can review if anybody has questions specifically about what we do, but we do have a very comprehensive training program that we'll imp implement in your laboratory. And uh, typically, you know, this is maybe about a day's worth of, of, of on-site, uh, you know, back and forth. We may come in a little bit early, make sure everything is set up, all the software is installed, all the integration pieces are complete. Um, if there is uh, any type of DME or material file that we can install and get everything ready for you on the design side, we're going to try and take care of that, um, not during training time, but in a way that doesn't affect your training time so we can spend as much time as possible, making sure that we cover all the you know, the day-to-day -day operations uh, of the printer and the software and, and all the related accessories. So this is pretty much based on you guys here as far as how long that would take. Um, we have a whole team of, of technicians here that have, they're all dental technicians and we now have a couple of doctors on staff as well. So we're well entrenched in the dental industry. Our, our technical team um, has lived, eaten and breathed what you guys are doing every day in the laboratory. And we deliver a different kind of support. We, we try and pair laboratories with our technical team so that you know, typically if you're doing a certain type of procedure or you're running things um, software-wise, certain types of software, we're going to pair you with the best possible technician to help you through that day-to-day -day production. If there is any question, you know, if there are any issues that pop up, that person has known exactly what you guys are doing in the laboratory and can quickly address uh, and, and, and diagnose any problems and get you back on track. So, um, you know, having that experience in the field is always good. Uh, the other thing is, you know, we can dispatch technicians pretty quickly uh, to pretty much anywhere in the country within a day or two. So being on site, if we do need to make a more involved repair is, is not a problem. And in the interim, we do offer backup print services. So if for whatever reason we need to, you know, change out a light engine or fix something that's more mechanical that needs to be you know, it may take a day or two, we can take your work and make sure that from the day to day perspective, operations are continuing, that work is continuing to go out. And then, of course, helping you to maintain uh, the printers and do any type of maintenance with you. Um, we can work in a number of different ways. Obviously, we're all familiar with this PC screen sharing. Uh, we use a program called Assist, which allows us to connect with you and work together on your PC. And we also have a full studio here in-house in that we can do video presentations together uh, with your team. So for example, if you needed help cleaning, something was happening during the cleaning process, we can video that in and be working simultaneously doing the same things that you're doing with our system and our team here. Um, perfect, Jim. So kind of tying this all together, and we talked about a whole lot of things together, but the, the, I think there's a few main takeaways from, from today. First of all, Nex has got a phenomenal printer with great speed, great throughput. We use it here in the lab. So we know absolutely what it can do. And of course, you know, having that, having that confidence in the software and in the nesting and just in the overall workflow that you know, has been developed, just having that confidence, knowing that your work's gonna, it's gonna go out, it's gonna get done. Um, obviously you know, having that validated key print compatible uh, workflow, the, the resins, you know, ensures that everything will be produced 
just the way you think it would from your from your files, then clearly show the the accuracy and precision of the printer. And then just peace of mind. Um, we're here to help you. We're here with you every step of the way. You'll have your own team of technicians, both at Nexa 3D and internally here at 3D DDS, who can you know keep you operational no matter what the situation is. Great, thanks, Colin. Appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, folks, as we wrap it up here, uh, and I know we've gone a little bit long, but just to uh, let you guys know, obviously, it is a, it is a true ecosystem, right? It's it's to make sure that the the printer's doing what it's supposed to do, and and then we have the materials that you know are, are high high grade materials, and then we have the support piece, right, with with three D DDS, and so. It really is a is a full circle ecosystem that is here to make sure that uh, no lab or manufacturer is is uh, is just thrown out there and, and left alone. Uh, we're there for you, and we want to make sure that uh, each of you guys are are covered and uh, and uh, taken care of. So, uh, with that being said, uh, we'll open it up uh, here in a second for some Q and A. Uh, if there is any, uh, I'll look on my chat. If you want to. Uh, direct chat me, you can, uh, and then we'll ask questions, but we'll open it up uh, to go from there. But first I would just like to say, we are doing a little webinar special uh, with the three, with the with the NXD uh, 200. The printer does retail for 49.9. Uh, we're gonna provide a discount of 5,000 off, uh, as well as uh, it'll include the printer, uh, some resin, two Everlast membranes, and then the, X, uh, the Nexa X software is included. So right at about a 10 grand discount, on the machine uh, from now until um, the end of the year. Uh, so if you would just mention that uh, as we're walking through, uh, you know, going into more details, uh, we'll be we'll be happy to, to work with you on that. Uh, and then as far as contacts uh, with my team uh, and the partner teams, uh, these are uh, who who the, who, the, who make up our team. Uh, myself and then Brendan Carberry, uh, who is, uh, was with me at Align and then uh, over at uh, Structo with uh, in the 3D printing side. So he's got a wealth of experience in dental uh, and Brendan's email is right there. And then uh, recently came on board Ray Norwood, uh, who will be running the European side of our business uh, on the dental on the dental side. Ray has got a wealth of experience, implant background, uh, time with Photocentric and, and Structo as well on the 3D printing side. Uh, so again, wealth of wealth of uh, 3D printing knowledge, dental knowledge uh, on the Nexa dental team. Uh, and then our partner contacts, you just heard from Colin and then Doug Statham, uh, who runs the digital material side for Keystone. Uh, there is his contact and Doug is, I've worked with Doug in the past as well. And his knowledge of materials and the 3D printing, uh, um, 3D printing machines, just the whole, 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 whole process is is truly amazing and uh there to help you guys so uh with that we'll open it up if there are any questions um and uh please feel free to reach out to us um via email and we'll, we'll have we'll be happy to set up additional time but any if there are any questions phil i i don't know um if you can let us know it'd be great Is it open, Phil? Hello? I can't hear anything. I don't see any questions in the chat that those of you oh, yeah. have I mean, access to it though. Let's give people another minute or two. Okay. Q and A, here we go. Will Keysoft Clear be available for your printer? Um, good question, Adam. Um, I would say stay tuned for early next year. You'll see some updated news on um on Clear Soft Spring. Very that that answer is sufficient. <laughs> um, there will be some there will be some updated news uh, in a couple months on that. Great. 
Yep. So the Q and A box up there. Up there. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Okay. Yeah. So the idea here, uh, folks, was just this will be a, a a series of of webinars on the dental on the dental side. We just uh, we want to you know make sure that uh, you guys know what we're doing here at, at Nexa and with our partners and. And uh, as we move forward, then there'll be uh, other specific webinars focused in on competitive situations, things like that. Uh, but please stay tuned for those as we move into 2022. And hopefully you'll be able to see some of us live soon. So hopefully in yeah. Chicago in, uh, in February, uh, you'll see some programming around this. Uh, uh, Keystone will be at the NADL Vision 21 show in Las Vegas uh, in January. Uh, I'll give Nexa some promotion. Nexa will be at the uh, Forum Next in Frankfurt next week, yep. uh, as will I. Um, and uh, so if, uh, if anybody has any questions for Keystone at any time, you can always ping Doug or me or Ben. We're eminently available. Um, and we will be um, doing more live and uh, featured presentations in the coming months uh, on these workflows. And we will be at Lab Day in Chicago in February. And stay tuned some, too for some exciting news about other uh, other things coming from Nexa as well. All right, folks. Well, with that, um, let me just check one more time. There's one more. Is that one more Q and A? Let's see. No, that's Adam. Chat. Uh, thank you, Tim. Okay, good. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, all right, guys. With with that being said, I appreciate your time today. Uh, we will end uh, end this uh, webinar and uh, appreciate everyone. Uh, attending and uh, look forward to uh, hearing from you guys and uh, presenting Nexa and Keystone and 3D DS to you. Thank you all. Have a Thanks, wonderful Chip. day. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.